Welcome back to a new episode here in Suave. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to make, how to animate your photos in DaVinci Resolve 16. I was, I've been working on this video for a couple of days now because I was having a lot of issues like crashing in GPU. I was not able to finish that last third way until like today. I had to reinstall everything. So yeah, that's basically those three things are the ways of animating pictures that I'm going to show you. And the first one is basically just playing around with the hues of the color. And for that, we're just going to create a new timeline and put it at 720 because that was the first part of this video I recorded uh, when I was having issues. So I thought that re decreasing the resolution was going to help me to be able to get the things done. And I was able to work it out for the first two methods but not the third one. So for the first method, we're gonna go to the color tab. And first of all, we're gonna create a new serial node. And after we create a new serial node, you can actually just um, skip this alpha output um, creation part because we don't really use that part in this video. Um, and then after you select the color of your image, you wanna use the picker to add more color to it. But make sure you just, you, there's only like a certain limit that you can get to when selecting colors. And to be able to really select all the colors, you're gonna have to play around with the bars in there, in the luminance bar here, or like the satura saturation and even the hue. So we are able to select all the color range that our image has. As you can see now, like I'm playing around with the saturation colors and then also with the, with even the hue, so I'm able to select all the orange parts of the image. And once I have all of that selected, we are able to go and actually, we are able to actually go and animate our picture. So for the animating our picture, we have to go to the color wheel section and we're gonna create a keyframe, not for the first corrector, but the second one, which is the one that we have our color selected, our color range selected. And after we create that first keyframe, for this method, I changed the lift mode. Um, and that's basically just gonna actually just change the whole color. You can also animate the gamma and the gain and the offset, but that's up to you. The basics and the main part of this video is that you just drag that lift wheel around and you're gonna be able to change the color. As you can see here, it's gonna go to pink. And you don't have to go the whole wheel around like I did in this video, but yeah, it's just a thing that I could, that I wanted to show you how you, how much like the range of the colors that you can get to. Um, and that's basically gonna only change the car in the picture and not the whole background. So then that's, that is going to make your image, that is gonna make your image more, more interesting to look at, I guess you could say, which is like a little cool touch that you can make to, make your image come to life. I'm drinking some tea right now, although it's kind of hot where I'm at right now, but I just felt like drinking some tea. All right, so then after we have all the color, that's pretty much it. And the last, you have to make sure that if you wanna have a loop image, you wanna make the last keyframe to be the same color as the first keyframe. Cause otherwise it will look kind of odd, but if you have a sort of like an infinite loop um, idea that will be a requirement that you end and begin with the same color. And that's basically, basically it for the first one. So for the second one animation is basically using motion graphics elements to animate your picture. And in order to do that, we are first going to drag our image onto our timeline and we're going to go to a fusion tab and animate it di directly in it. For that, we're gonna create a new background and we are gonna create an ellipse, el ellipse? I can't remember how to say that word, I, I always forget. And we're gonna shape it in the way that you want. You can add any shape that you want and this is just one method and one possibility that I'm showing you here. Um, yeah, so we're gonna basically make it sort of like a ring and we add a color to it. And then after we have that, we want to um, create a 
mask around the our subject in the image because we want the back part of the ring to disappear behind the, the guy to add a sort of like a 3D effect you could say uh, yeah I guess you could say a three a, at least not only a simple two dimension and what we're gonna do is basically just gonna create a mask around the this subject that we have here and I'm gonna speed this up because it will take a little while to mask everything out and once we have all our the whole mask ready we the next step would be to basically just animate a ring and also we have to change the paint mode of our mask from merge to multiply and then we invert it so the outside part of the ring is actually the one that's showing but as you're gonna see when the ring moves you can animate the ring before you do the mask or after it doesn't really matter but you are gonna see that if we move our ring uh the ring the front part of the ring is also going to be affected by our mask so right now in the video you're just seeing the process of just animating keyframe by keyframe like all the keyframes gonna go all the way up and then all the way down and after that you're gonna be you're gonna see that the ring is affected by this mask as i said and the way that we are gonna, the thing that we are gonna do to fix this is we're gonna have to copy the same thing. We're gonna have to copy this same ring that we have, the whole thing, and we're gonna replace our polygon mask by a uh, mask paint that is basically just gonna be able to allow us to show the front part of the ring. I'm sorry, um, the front part of the ring. So once we add the mask paint, we're going to go to the stroke tool and we're going to create a line that sort of resembles the side, the ring curvature that we have. And also we have, we want to make our line to be a little bit longer than our subject. So it does actually covers the front part of it. So it covers all the areas that would be affected by the mask on the other ring. So after we have that ready, we are now using our mask below our, our first ring mask and we are not able to actually make it work for some reason. So for that, we're going to have to take the mask out and drag it on top of the ellipse and we're going to change the ellipse mask uh, paint mode to multiply. And then we're going to increase the border width of our mask paint. We're going to increase the, and we're also going to invert our mask paint. So once we increase the size of it, we're going to be able to cover all the different sections that we need to. Oh, it's started to rain. Um, and after that, basically what's left to do is we have to animate our, our second mask and also just making sure all the little details are correct there. So you see now you are able to see the whole uh, ring in front of be and behind and then the last thing is to add a glow effect you cannot add all sort of effects it's all up it all depends on your creativity it all it's all up to you so after we animate that we have to basically copy all the keyframes from the first circle so they are actually aligned and i'm gonna just speed this process up because i'm i will assume that you know how to track keyframes I guess you could say it's basically just following it and copying it and making sure it's on top of the other mask that we have another way that we could have done that more easily is to add a transform to these background node that we have there and then just animate it that way but I tend to overcomplicate things a lot of times and the last step would be to select everything on our spline tool and then smooth it out by pressing F and also we can add a we can add um, a motion blur to our face. The last thing that I did was I opened the I used that same castle image that I had and I basically instead of creating the mask of the column that I wanted to animate in DaVinci Resolve, what I did was I animated 
I separated the image. The way that I did that was I used these. It's GIMP is free, by the way. I basically just masked out these portions and also the background. I just uh, cloned the clouds. And you, for that, you might need an image that is that has a background that's sort of like easy to cover up because otherwise it might be a little bit complicated to attain this effect without look, making it look weird. So basically, you want to put all your images on your timeline and so even the background, and then you right click and create a new fusion composition. And after that, you're gonna add a transform node to each of the portions of the image that you want to animate. And basically just a basic animation of it um, coming from the bottom, like growing, I guess you could say. And what I did was I animated using the transform tool and that's basically it. And then another thing that I did was later in a, in a little bit, you will see that the column is actually not in the right place for some reason, but there's an easy way to solve that. We're basically just gonna use the merge tool and we're gonna use the merge tool to position it in the right place that we want because it's a little bit more to the left. And after we do that, we wanna add a mask also to our tool because um, otherwise it will just be showing there on top of the other one. As you can see here in the video, um, by using the mask, we avoid having that second column show up on top of the other one. Because if you put it as a background, it actually might mess everything up because it doesn't actually show up in front, of, in front of your image, which is what we want. So basically the easiest way to resolve that uh, is to add a mask on top of, on the merge node. So then the image only shows up when it's in that mask. And as you can see now, the column is sort of like popping up and growing. And this is sort of like a cool effect. You can actually even do this effect on videos, I guess, if you have, um, but it will be a little bit more complicated because you'll have a lot of more keyframes moving, right? Yeah, and then that's basically all of it that you need to do in this, in this this for this animation. Here you can see the merge node moving so we can position it in the right place. And that is, Pretty much it. After that, we I added a couple of more things. Like I went to the spline tool, and I added, a, I made them the animation a little bit smooth. And then I also added motion blur to the object to the transform nodes because those are the ones that are actually moving, not really the merge node or the actual image. You, I don't think you can actually add motion blur to the image itself to the media in portion. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. Those are the three ways that you can do or use to animate your images and make them a little bit more interesting or popping. And yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you found inspiration, I guess you could say, and that you learned a couple of new things that you can do in DaVinci Resolve. So I hope that you have a great day and I hope to see you in the next episode here in Suave. See you next time.